sigma is. There are two types of physicists in this world which exist and had existed. The first type are the physicists who work on the pre-existing theories, that is the theories which were invented by various physicists in the past, and they try to explain the new phenomenon of nature based on those theories. And the second group is the one which invent their own mathematics sometimes and their own theories to explain the various phenomena of nature. The best example would be of the greatest physicist of all times, which is Isaac Newton. Isaac Newton didn't have the mathematics to explain his theory of gravity. So he invented his own mathematics. He invented calculus. But calculus was accepted by everybody at the time. But that is not always the case. Sometimes what you put forward into the physics community is not accepted by the physics community itself. It has to go through a lot of uh, skepticism and sometimes even criticism. For example, when Einstein had put forward his theory of special relativity, nobody accepted it. Nobody accepted it at the time because it was so much against what their intuition said. Even Max Planck did not accept Einstein's idea that time could be relative. Everybody believed that time was absolute. They followed the path of Newton because it was Newton and Galileo who had said that time was absolute and had given something known as the Galilean transformation, which we are not going to look into this video. Then we are going to see when we get into the special theory of relativity. But it was hard for Einstein to convince the physics community that he was right. And that is what makes great physicists, you know. Even when Max Planck had put forward his uh, idea that energy can be quantized, although Einstein had put forward his uh, photoelectric effect on the idea of Planck that energy is quantized. Later, when quantum mechanics came about, which was based on this quantization of energy, the idea of uh, Planck that energy is quantized, it was not accepted by Einstein. Einstein just felt that it cannot be possible. Quantum mechanics just couldn't be true. And today, we are going to look into another such great physicist who existed in the same era as Einstein, Planck, Dirac, Madame Curie, and many other great German physicists. And that, as you might have guessed from the title of this video, is Wolfgang Pauli. But to actually realize the greatness of Wolfgang Pauli, you need to first understand beta decay. So let us quickly get into understanding what a beta decay is. And to understand what a beta decay is, first let me draw a nucleus, right? So I'm going to quickly draw a nucleus. Nucleus is not a nucleus of a cell, <laughs> it is the nucleus of an atom. That is, it consists of some protons and neutrons. I have drawn here the protons with uh, yellow and the neutrons with blue. It will not be a very accurate picture because I am not a very great artist, but good enough to understand nuclear decay. Now these uh, large nuclei are actually very unstable. That is because nature likes even numbers of uh, neutrons and protons. So nature promotes even number of protons and neutrons. So nature likes even numbers of protons and neutrons, but that is not always the case. Some nuclei will have 
odd numbers of protons or neutrons. In that case, what uh, will happen is that the nuclei will decay, right? And how does the decay process work? Let me quickly tell you. If this is a neutron, then in a decay process, this neutron will decay. That is, it will change into a proton and a electron. Let me draw a smaller one, right? Because the electron is a tiny, tiny particle. So this uh, neutron will decay into a proton and an electron in order so that we have an even number of neutrons and protons in the nuclei, which is more stable. So the reason nature promotes even numbers of protons or neutrons because it makes the nucleus stable. Now, one thing that you can easily see in this process is that charge is conserved. That the neutron is called the neutron because it is neutral. The proton has a charge of plus E and the electron has a charge of minus E as you all know. So, the net charge on the right hand side of this uh, decay equation, let me call it the decay equation. So, the right hand side of the decay equation, the net charge is zero and on the left side of the decay equation two, the net charge is zero. And hence what we see is that charge is conserved. And the electron which is released in this beta decay is known as the beta particle. Right, and that is why the decay is known as beta decay. And uh, in fact, uh, conservation of charge is not only valid in beta decay, but it is valid everywhere. No experiment in the history of physics has been able to prove that the conservation of charge is not valid. That is because the conservation of charge is valid. Charge is always conserved. And as a matter of fact, even when we will look into the special theory of relativity, you will find that mass varies with velocity, but charge does not. Now, another process by which uh, nuclei gain stability is uh, the alpha decay. And then physicists measure the energy of the alpha particles. We already know the process of alpha decay, uh, helium, right, uh, helium 2 ion is, uh, that is the helium nucleus is the release. And uh, then when physicists measure the energy of these alpha particles, they found that uh, the energy of each alpha particle that was released in the decay process was the same. All alpha particles have the same energy, but that was not true for beta decay. When physicists measure, tried measuring the energy of the beta particles, they were completely surprised. Their minds were blown. That is because the energy of the beta particles were not the same, but they changed. That is, with each nuclei, the energy of the beta particles changed continuously. In fact, I have a graph of how the energy changes. Let me put it in. This is the graph from the beta decay experiments, and you can see how the energies of the beta particles varies with uh, intensity or the nuclei. Uh, here they have used uh, bismuth nuclei. So, so this is at the time couldn't really understand or explain how is it that the energies of the alpha, alpha particles are the same for each decay process, whereas the energy of the beta particles change. Now, a lot of physicists at the time when there is the experiments were carried out in trying to explain why the energy of uh, the beta decay or the energy of the beta particles uh, vary. What they suggested is that 
the conservation of energy is wrong the conservation of energy is not valid right so many suggestions suggested that the conservation of energy is wrong but it later turned out that what was wrong was their point of view that is the conservation of energy was and is a fundamental principle of nature and has never been observed to be violated and the person who disagreed with all the physicists of the time who believed in this idea that the conservation of energy is wrong was Wolfgang Pauli excuse me for the blur picture but Chandra's were not really good at his time so this young and great physicist is none other than Wolfgang Pauli right. and Wolfgang Pauli was the one who disagreed with the physicist at the time who held the view that uh, the energy conservation of principle was violated. He said that energy conservation principle is a fundamental principle of nature. It is not violated. In fact, what happens is that in the decay process, let me quickly write it again. Right? This is the decay process. Let me write it like this, a beta particle. In, a, in this uh, decay process, this extra energy is actually carried off by an uh, unknown particle. That is what uh, Pauli suggested. That uh, it is not that energy conservation principle is wrong, but there is this unknown particle that uh, was being created in the beta decay process and our measurement devices were just not sensitive enough to detect that particle. Now, one thing uh, that you can uh, easily observe from here is that this uh, unknown particle is neutral. You can easily see that because the neutron is neutral, as I already told you, and the charge over here is zero. So the unknown particle had to be neutral. And uh, in fact, if it did have some very small charge, then we and the uh, the conservation of uh, charge was not valid, then we would have observed its effect on matter. That is, whenever it passed through, let's say, water, right, of a nuclear reactor, like uh, these uh, decay processes have uh, happened in a nuclear reactor too. So when it will pass through the water of the nuclear reactor, we can easily observe its effect if it was charged because water is made up of electrons and protons. So a charged particle would obviously uh, interact with the atoms of the water molecule but that was never observed and hence this particle had to be neutral when the uh, physicists try to measure the mass effect of this uh, beta decay that is the difference in the mass of the uh, nucleus when it had not decayed and then measuring the mass of the nucleus when it did decay they found that uh, when they try to find out the mass of this unknown particle through by using mass effect, by using the very famous, uh, the most famous, in fact, equation of physics, E equals mc squared. What you can do is uh, delta m is equal to delta E upon c squared. Using this, you can find the difference in mass, right, of uh, the particle or the nucleus before and after the decay and then you can find out the energies and masses of the products that is the proton and uh, the electron and uh, the unknown particle right so when they try to calculate the mass of this unknown particle what they found is that uh, the mass was very very small that is because the mass effect was very very small right when they tried to find the mass effect they found nothing that is all the mass was seeming to be conserved. So they said that this uh, new particle had to be massless. But actually they were wrong. At that time there were not many sensitive uh, apparatus to 
actually measure the mass of that particle and hence uh, they found that result but actually this uh, unknown particle does have a mass right but that mass is very 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 small i think that mass c the electron itself is i think uh, i'm not really sure about the numbers but i think it is 1000 or 5000 times uh, lighter than the proton or the neutron and this new particle that was detected is 10 to the power minus 5 times lighter than the electron so you can just imagine how small its mass will be and hence this the new particle was actually named the neutrino so this new particle was named neutrino you whose meaning is the little neutral one which is kind of a cute name to give now the, as i told you that these uh, neutrinos are present to wherever there are decay processes happening that is wherever there are beta decays happening which involve as i already told you our nuclear reactors and also the sun because nuclear re uh, reactions happen at the sun too so there is the neutrinos are produced uh, everywhere where there are beta, beta decay processes happening and detecting these neutrinos is not very easy because they do not interact with matter so these neutrinos don't interact with matter much and hence they were named ghost particles so these neutrinos are known as ghost particles too because they just don't interact with matter even if uh, uh, i think trillions or just uncountable amount of neutrinos are produced by the sun but we fail to detect most of them most of them just pass through earth which is so huge right and that's why very complicated apparatus has to be built to detect this uh, very elusive and uh, very very noble particle so that was all about the neutrino and the greatest physicist or the great physicist who postulated the neutrino and fought against the physicist uh, of his time who believed that energy conservation principle which is the fundamental core principle of nature was wrong and that is what makes full frank pauli a physics genius if you enjoyed this video do not forget to subscribe to my channel and like this video i will see you in the next one thanks for watching